Yes, sure. Matthew, and then I'm coming to you, Nizam. Yes. Okay, I wanted to ask in, in, uh, back about this, this question of whether the UN Mine Action Service uh, in Somalia shares information with the U.S. intelligence or FBI. Back on June 24th, I asked you that, and I, I was told that, and I asked you to try to get an answer from DPKO, Mr. Ladsu, or Ms. Ms. Uh, Mai Kayu of the un UNMAS, but I was told that there would be no response whatsoever. So I tried to act Ms. Willis K. I've been asking for weeks. Now, today, I see a response from Kieran Dwyer of DPKO from, Ms. Mai, from UNMAS, essentially, in part at least, acknowledging that Mr. Bax of, un of UNMAS was uh, training the Somalis on how to keep uh, such evidence uh, safe in order for the US, UN FBI. So I have two questions. One is, is it appropriate? I wanted, it, it seems many people say it puts the UN at risk to be part of the chain of evidence to a, to a P5 member that's actually, you know, has an interest in Somalia. And number two, I, I'm sorry to ask it, but I wanted to know why I never got an answer to my question, because I asked it in this room on June 24th, the exact question, and was told, first was given no answer and was told there would be no answer. And then I see an answer in writing from Kieran Dwyer uh, elsewhere. So can you explain that? Thank you. On the, the last part, uh, I don't have any comment on that, uh, Matthew. On the first part of your question, uh, the United Nations Mine Action Service has a mandate uh, to provide technical support to the Somali police force in explosive ordnance disposal, uh, first response and post-blast investigation uh, to improvise explosive devices, including mentoring and training in law enforcement investigative techniques at the request of the Somali authorities en masse, in other words, the UN Mine Action Service supports cooperation between law enforcement agencies in facilitating knowledge sharing between the Somali police force and other law enforcement agencies. The relationship is between the Somali police force and these agencies, with the en masse providing technical support en masse operates uh, fully within its mandate in this regard. There also, there also seems to be now an acknowledgement uh, that, that Mr. Bax, you know, there's disagreements about whether it's legally constitutes <coughs> sexual harassment, but there seems to be acknowledgements and, report, and quotes from people within the Mogadishu compound, which is also what the whistleblower rose. And so, although it's sort of dismissed in some reports, I wonder, what does the UN think? Is it appropriate, even if somebody is an effective de-minor, to, to essentially demand sexual favors from other UN staff? And I do want to ask you, since you now have an answer to the question I asked on June 24th, when did you get the answer? And, and so, I understand that it's a DPKO decision of how they dole out information, but can you state that you asked at the time, June 24th, and can you say when this answer was provided to you and why it wasn't provided to me? Well, Who asked the a question? couple of minutes late coming into the room. Um, that's when I got it, Matthew. And uh, with regard to uh, uh, the person you mentioned uh, in relation to a staff uh, member for the UN in Somalia who was subject of an anonymously filed complaint regarding conduct, the contracting office, uh, UNOPS, the UN Office uh, for Project Services, is uh, inquiring into the allegations of while these inquiries are going on. UNOPS will not have any further comment. Okay, thank you very much, Nizar. Yeah, uh, Last my, question. My, yeah, my question.